putting it in practice means that we're going to make mistakes and um i see sex and, and intimacy and that kind of relationship is just the most incredible playground and i think it's really um perhaps that sounds childish that's the wrong word it, it can be deep as well um and so and dangerous right i'd say playground yes that dangerous <laughs> playground as well right like you, you can get burnt you can hurt yourself you can fall it's not like with cotton padding <laughs> but uh But, uh, it, But then you know yourself. Welcome men to a roundtable with Manifesto. Today we're going to be talking about sexual mastery, which is the title that we've given to a topic, uh, which we're really seeing as a holistic approach to looking at our lives and um, being able to deal with the difficult, fiery, spicy aspects of, of how we're putting together a life of meaning and purpose here in Manifesto um, and dealing with sexuality in a, in, in a way that we found has been one of the central and vital aspects of the work we've been doing with Manifesto. So I'm really excited that we have uh, four of our uh, really exciting, interesting, inspiring men uh, in different ages and different levels of experience that are joining us today um, and are going to be sharing some perspectives and input Uh, and then we, we can, we're going to have some discussion following that. Uh, so I was thinking we'll start off uh, by having, we have Dietmar, who's a urologist, doctor in Germany, uh, and talks to men pretty much every single day, often with very, very um, hands-on approach to talking about their sexuality and some of the problems that we've had and really contributed a lot uh, to Manifesto already in this regard and the men's work in Europe in general. Um, and then I want to put uh, up alongside him, Richard, Uh, who is a coach uh, and podcaster running a, a podcast called Man Reimagined. And then we'll see if there's a couple of comments and questions to take from that. And then after that, we're going to have Marty, who runs Brave Man or Dapper Man down in, in Holland, uh, and Frederick Brumming, who is uh, a guy here in Denmark who has taken a perhaps abnormal decision regarding his sexuality here uh, in, in his life, uh, which, which I think uh, is really interesting and deserves a lot of respect as well. So, um, yeah, I think let's get it started. Uh, Dietmar, would you, would you kick us off? The question that we're looking at is, what is sexual mastery? Uh, and how is it that we should approach sexuality as men looking together to put together a life of meaning and flourishing for ourselves? Thanks, Paul. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, when I talk to men about sexuality, and it's always it's always uh, an issue because they walk in and they feel a little bit ashamed about uh, their topics they might have. I try to to uh, relieve a little bit because um, sexuality is is an important factor of man's health in general. We all know that um, you know during the the sexual act itself, you'll have a massive uh, flow of oxytocin. The, the hormone that we all know that makes us very happy. First time we, we meet this hormone is when we start sucking mom's breast. And then she will have a, a, a flow of oxytocin, which gets into our blood system. And that's the first time we experience that. And we always want to have that again. And later on in our lives, we, we uh, get this feeling again when we have sexual activity. This oxytocin also has an impact on other systems uh, in the neurobiological system. Um, for example, the, um, the, the stress hormone cascade will be uh, influenced by this as well. So we all know you'll, have, uh, you, you'll be relaxed after sexual activity, but there is a late response as well. So there's a positive aspect of rec regular sexual activity to your general health. It'll decrease blood pressure. You'll be relaxed. Uh, the hormonal system will be uh, in, in a good steady state. Also, the immune system will be positively influenced by that. The immune response to various uh, diseases will be increased uh, if you have regular sexual activity. So that's the first approach, and that's something that we should all be aware of when we start thinking about, is it worthwhile talking about sexuality? Now, if we, if we narrow it down into a uh, man's life and meaning and purpose, the next step really is, it gives you an idea about how you live your relationship. For example, if you as a man uh, are able to explain your sexual desires and you're able to talk to your partner about what you really want, uh, then you show yourself uh, in a, what, I, what I always call a, a strong 
weak position because that's something that you really need and that you have to receive from somebody else and you put yourself into the arms of the other uh, to be able to give that to you. That gives uh, something like um, an exclusiveness to the relationship that, that you have to your partner. And it's very important to be able to communicate this uh, and to look uh, at the at all the aspects that are behind that. I had a guy who uh, told me that he was he was when whenever he had sexual contact to his woman, he was trying to please her. And it was very important for him to be pleasant and to do what she wanted, but not to cross any any line, any red line, any border. But the other way around, he wasn't able to receive the same from her. Now the 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 interesting thing about that is he obviously had to be in control and when you when you're in control it's this is something um that shows that there is an underlying fear of not being in control and there must be a good reason for that and that's something that that opens up a space to really enter psychological reactive patterns of the the man who's acting out his uh, sexuality in this way. So that's, that's the second uh, reason where I think it's really important because sexuality gives you an idea how you are able to really communicate and to live relationships. Because that it, it, you really have to open up in order to get uh, what I call the exclusiveness into this relationship. And the third aspect uh, that's very important and i see a lot of men with this is the question how you yourself when when you think about yourself being out of the relationship uh, how you deal with your desires if you feel that there is uh, you know a sexual desire then many men tend to react with a wish of instant decompression and uh, one thing that we we're all aware of is the the uh, the use of porn for example that's that's an easy way to get decompressed and you can do that you can have all your desires nobody would you have you don't have to talk to anyone uh, anyone about that and you'll have a, an instant decompression but that leads uh that has a narrow uh, negative impact on your um the way you look at yourself because that's something you don't want to talk about and it's something that you uh, feel is wrong of your personality and that's a negative circle that you get into um, but that's that's an easy way to get the decompression and the way out of that would be to look uh, into um, sexual desires as a source of a very strong energy that you might be able to use in a different direction so if sexuality is something that's a strong source of energy then you might be able to look at this as an energetic um, topic rather than just the physical decompression and you could try and channel this energy into something that's uh, going into a different direction which is then uh, a relationship to the meaning that you're trying to to put into your life these are the three topics that that always appear when i talk to men about sexuality and i think it's very important because that's that's the the holistic approach you'll have the the medical impact the physical impact the psychological impact and then there's this 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 overarching question who are you what are you willing to do what's your your you know the the um the willing what are you willing to achieve in your life and you can use the, the uh, sexual energy to catalyze that. Yeah. So that's it for me now at this point. And I'd like to hand over to Rich or to you again, Paul. Thank you very much, Dietmar. And yeah, just really inspiring that there's a person in the kind of European <laughs> medical system, which is looking at these things all the way from that basic physical level, but then taking it up to that holistic level as well of, of, of the human relating and, and human being and, and able to bring those things together. That's really appreciated. And I think Rich is especially uh, focused on, on those levels of, of human humanness as well. So uh, I think we'll, we'll, I think it fits in perfectly for him to take up the board here. So over to you, Richard. 
Yeah, I'd love to try and um, build on what Deepmar has just shared. Uh, he basically summed up most of the things that I wanted to say. So I'll try and add it from a personal experience. And again, to echo what you said, that there's a doctor um, operating in the system that's aware of these pieces as well. I'd, I'd love to start off with the idea that I think Deepmar finished on, which was that if we look at mastering sexuality or our sexual energy, then it has to be, it would be helpful to do it from a place of looking at how you're using this energy in your life rather than looking to um, literally ejaculate it or push it into uh, something or someone and to, to release it. And so these ideas of, um, that come from yogic kind of disciplines of holding back, you know, there are the practices and there are particular, there's particular work you can do in yoga that will, that is designed, these Oli mudras that are designed to help you actually work with the energy that builds up in you when you withhold from ejaculation from a longer period of time because they recognized it as being a very powerful thing and again to reference yoga it's just a thousands of years old system that also understood that without the kind of grounding that we need as men in particular then this energy will leak out in different ways and so to introduce this word of uh a container that we need to then build for ourselves so how do we on our daily lives remain grounded and have this kind of like clear thread of direction and, and, and purpose that we don't get as easily distracted from when, and to use this kind of potent energy that we have inside us to actually uh, to do something of impact and to create so that's just another way of, of looking at of sexual mastery rather than the kind of classic understanding of well, how do I have an excellent time in bed? Um, because for me, the danger of that, not to echo the points that Dietmar made around trying to please a woman and, and seeking validation a lot of the time, seeking safety. It's, I've lost my thread. Oh no. <laughs> my key point just completely left me in that moment. That's a shame. Um, well, I think it's an excellent Richard Wood could I ask you to go, get back to you you started by saying you could illustrate with a, some, a bit of your personal story as well so um, I think you made an excellent point there as well <laughs> uh, which I thought summed up a lot of, of what Dietmar said but, but would you mind bringing in a bit of like how, of your journey and, and, and what's how, how, how you've been looking at that container and, and helping to direct things and some of the difficulties sure. maybe that have been on that way, yeah. Sure, and thanks for picking up the, the thread. It's frustrating when the main point I was trying to make just evaporates when you're thought, you know, doing a recording. Um, so be it. So I'm a recovering nice guy. I think a lot of men are familiar with that trope, that idea that um, we seek validation. We're very uh, insecure. This is avoiding conflict, but that also means avoiding saying what we want and need. And that really shows up in bed as well. And so... Um, Touch is a, a love language of mine, and I've always shown up in bed um, happily. <laughs> but then I would quickly become attached to this this woman that I was intimate with, um, purely through intimacy and, or, or sex, I should say, because I've now come to realize that they are not necessarily the same thing. And so I spent a good chunk of my life um, being stuck in relationships and just chasing not just sex, but that sense of safety that I would find in uh, what was to me sort of perceived intimacy. Um, and then eventually the women would kind of, you know, get a bit tired of this and not and, and seek a stronger man. They could be stronger women. They might not need uh, that me to be that, just play that role. But they would definitely get tired of that. And so um, in between, I would find myself constantly approaching uh, unavailable women in terms of emotionally and, and just being sucked into that dynamic of giving them time and space in the hope that I would find safety and but not even declaring that I like them <laughs> and then continually being friend zoned um, and I'm sure a lot of men can resonate with this and instead of just saying what I wanted and being willing to receive rejection you know so there's a self-worth piece in here as well and then I would act out and find um, release quite literally <laughs> through porn and, and, and in other ways that were just very very unhealthy but they met that need and so they then became quite addictive um, and so you know, me lecturing earlier about this sense of creating a container comes from a, a life-changing realization for me and in, in me learning to do that more and more and better and better. Um, and of course, other issues around healthily expressing my needs and healthy communication with, with women and men has led me to, uh, yeah, being a very cool relationship with a woman and the, 
previous one felt healthier. And so I'm much more in control of that. Perhaps that's a Freudian slip and deep market jump in, but I'm much more in control of my own um, destiny and what I'm doing. And most importantly, to wrap up, she's not the goal. And if I can reference David Data for a moment, this, this beautiful idea of like, we are as men that the kind of ship chartering a course across the ocean. There's, there needs to be a sense of direction that the woman, the feminine is the ocean itself. Um, but we need to find our, our bearings in this place and, and not kind of revolve around um, that kind of, um, that space too long and be, be, have a sense of purpose and, and whatever that takes. And that's why men's work feels so important because men can actually find that through each other and then do the amazing things in a healthy way uh, with their partners. Yeah, I certainly think that's a great metaphor. If you try to navigate by the ocean, then you'll tend to get lost. The ocean is a wild and dangerous and deep thing. Uh, you need to find a star that you can navigate by, right? Uh, and then um, and then that gives you a chance to find your way through. I've always kind of seen women as these wild and dangerous things uh, that need to be uh, dealt with as a wild and dangerous thing in many ways. Um, so that's a bit of a theme. But Dietmar, I, I want to give you an opportunity to, to respond to what, what Richard said. Well, looking at the metaphor, I think um, if you just look behind me, um, you can see the light that we all need when we're traveling overseas, when we're the ship crossing the ocean and uh, we're trying to uh, navigate around the ocean being being the woman or the partner, then we really need to have this this light that guides us and it has to be inside ourselves. And that's that's, I think... It's, it's very important to realize for every man that all the, the, the problems that they uh, experience with their sexuality, they're all guiding towards the inner self. Um, and for example, the, 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 the guy that I quoted with being in control, there is something that he fears of himself, something that he wants to and something that's, that's really burning inside but he fears that she might dislike it or that it's not socially accepted. And it's the, the, the huge step that you, that you then take is to realize that's part of me and maybe it needs to be changed a little bit. But the first thing is I need to realize it's part of myself. I need to talk about that and then see how she reacts. And that puts you into uh, the stronger position and that really gives you the opportunity to to be in touch and in contact with your with your core and i realized that sexuality is a great topic really to to uh, find the way to be able to look at yourself because it's so important and nobody wants to live without sexuality not sure that we can any questions guys for these two before we move on to our next speakers Mm, yeah, I have a question, especially because Dietmar just said sexuality is something that no one can really live without. And I personally have had a period where sexuality hasn't played a big role. And one way to explain it is to say I've channelized that energy successfully into my work. And, and then it's not really there in the bedroom anymore. But I wonder if, if that's a healthy thing um, or whether I've... I've done too much of sublimation and how to find the healthy balance here so that you can still really enjoy sex and love sex but have a lot of energy for your work as well yeah <clears throat> uh, let me reply on that one the we're talking about sexuality as a general topic so not uh, about intercourse or sexual activity with a partner so your aspect of uh, the, the, the sexual energy is very important i think that's what what rich just quoted but my approach to this, if I have somebody uh, trying to convince me that he doesn't need to act out sexuality, he just wants to feel the energy is, this is just not healthy, okay? First of all, from the, but I'm, I'm not a biologist being able to explain why uh, this is narrowed down into your uh, neurobiological system. But as a medic, not being sexually active is just not healthy. So... If you have the, the, the feeling that there is sexual 
energy, it's very good to be able to work with it and maybe to direct this energy into um, some kind of work that you're doing. But it's it's also very important just to be aware of the fact that it's the best thing to share with your partner because you will have you will have all these uh, neurobiological positive aspects and you will have uh, an exclusive relationship if you if you work it that way. And that's another aspect that's important for men's lives. We're not lonely wolves anymore. We need to be in a relationship. Do you have a take on that, Richard? No, I won't uh, take up any time by trying to add on what Deep said. I thought that was really well spoken. I noticed a couple of men have got their hands up, so maybe uh, we can make oh, space for that. I didn't see that, but yeah. Yeah, good. Alex, let's hear from you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to, to ask each of you, and I know it's a really big question, so I don't, don't expect you to have the answer just there, and uh, sort of just a short sort of insight perhaps, um, but what does sexual mastery look like for you? So Ditma and Rich, if you were to say, well, when I've reached sexual mastery, this is what I've, I've accomplished, this is where I am. That's a tough one, Alex, but nothing else to be expected from you, really. <laughs> For me, um, the, the biggest step was to introduce sexual energy and the, the, the awareness of uh, sexual energy being present into my daily routine. So when I, when I wake up in the morning and I do my, my mini workout, a little bit of uh, yoga, and afterwards I do my journaling, I always realize that there is this massive source of energy inside of me. And I, I tell myself or make sure that this is that's something that needs to be used in a positive way. Um, so I can that, that really drives me through the day when I'm when I'm on my mission with the work that I'm doing. Uh, but also it's something that I really want to share with uh, somebody else, but in, in an exclusive way. And if it doesn't work out that way, then I'd rather keep it as my uh, source of energy than just uh, spreading it away. But I'm not a master. I must admit here as well. <laughs> Thanks, Dipa. So I'm going to do that cheeky thing where I ask, answer your question with a question. <laughs> Not to throw it back at you, but um, again, to reference something that I learned from my yoga teacher. How's your life? You know, like if you look around, how, what's the quality of your interactions? Like what's the quality of your emotional kind of um, bandwidth? You know, like how are you, how's your intimacy levels with your partner? How's your level of desire to get up in the morning and actually do the thing? Do you have a thing? You know, these are kind of great questions to ask yourself to kind of check in with that. You know, do you need to kind of retreat and, and come to back to yourself and actually learn to build that container and just do you for a bit? Or is it time to step out and actually show up a bit more and, and spread some of that energy uh, in a healthier way? So that would be uh, my response to that question. Let me know what you think. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. I'm going to take my opportunity to use my role here to, to add something in as well, because I, I also want to actually disagree with Dietmar, which is a dangerous thing to do with a disagree with the doctor in the room. Um, <laughs> but... Um, it's a combination of the question that Achille asked and Alex asked, because I actually think there are plenty of examples of people who can reach a stage of sublimation of their sexual energy that can actually do that in a very healthy way. So I think we, we do see plenty of examples of repression of, 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 of life force, creative energy, which leads to all kinds of, you know, unhealthy situations. Um, and then I, I think that ultimately uh, sexual energy is, is a drive towards life and towards creation. And I think that there are plenty of men out there who, you know, have sex very irregularly, but are living very, very full, wholesome, 
and uh, creative lives <laughs> and, 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 and don't actually engage in physical sex that often uh, and have much less of a need for doing that. Uh, and maybe if they stopped with, you know, their work and their other creative activities, then, then they would need that more creative, that more kind of physical sexual outlet. But I, I actually believe that, that, you know, physical engagement in sex is, a, is, is just one level that one can engage as an output of that. Uh, it, what it leads to is, is like a kind of a connection, a deep uh, joining with another human being, <laughs> which leads to a sense of transcendence. And that's actually the deeper need. That's the, and if you're getting that need fulfilled in your relationship, in your work, in everything that you're doing, um, and I, I know some people who in their work life have just constant sense of synchronicity and things falling into place in the world kind of fitting together. And I think that that is a, a, an experience that um, it's easy to kind of like convince yourself you're having this and be spiritually bypassing, of course. But I actually do believe that 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 there is a path, for, and this is for me, sexual mastery is the path of of reaching that sense of transcendence um, in in higher and higher ways somehow. Yeah. So I'll I'll let you guys have an opportunity to answer that, or maybe we can take Stefan's question as well, and then uh, and then dive more into that before we take the next two speakers. What do you guys say? Do you have any comments immediately on that? Yeah, I don't think there is, there is the answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I agree that uh, that might be a way, but I think it's really, really, really hard to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I think it's dangerous uh, when it's misunderstood because if you if you look at the Catholic Church, for example, you know you have the, you you have uh, a complete negative. Uh, result on uh, suppressing sexual energy. And I think it's very important to distinguish between that. If you suppress that because you think it's a good way of spirituality to suppress this energy and try and uh, modify that and use it differently, then you'll end up uh, doing, well, stuff that's it's just not uh, healthy and not good. Mm. And if you think this to the end, then uh, what about the human being? I mean, what about mankind if you don't use sexuality for, for um, uh, intercourse and um, trying to really get into a relationship that's, as you said, transcendent and you need a transcendent relationship. If you want to, for example, raise a family, it's a very good start to have a transcendent relationship to a partner and then have kids and do that bit. So I'm just trying to say, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, and I can, I can subscribe to that, but mm -hmm. I've seen so many people trying to suppress that and then going towards the wrong direction. I think it's uh, very important to make sure that there is this energy and you can use it in various ways, but it has to be uh, a constructive way and a creative way. That's my reply to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it, Richard. Uh, just to piggyback on that, I think I think the deep is completely right. And some of the practices that I mentioned, you know, they're, they're not um, widely known. And then people pick them up and then start teaching them as kind of neo tantra. And there's there's lots of interesting things happening in in that space. But there's also a lot of misuse of sexual energy. And I guess just to highlight how potent and powerful it is, and how today there are so few examples public examples at least um, of people doing that well managing that energy well in a way that um, it, it had been done in the past I think we're living in a different time and so I think Dietmar's uh, points really spot on there's there's a real danger of you know diving off off piste and, and misusing that and we find ourselves in all kinds of trouble so if you're going to start messing with that and really diving into that side of uh, working with that energy then um, you better have the right support uh, and motivation uh, container again dare i say to do it yeah maybe one could say that a, a vital element is having a group of men or a teacher who does it well themselves <laughs> preferably not a commercial relationship between you as well i would say because that's the massive use of abuse as well that rich is talking about um but but a, a container of accountability 
and integrity uh, and an as a shared aspiration that that's at least some of the requirements i think watching youtube videos or going to some like eight week you know mo you know become a sexual <laughs> ninja course it's a very dangerous path uh to 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 go down um but but certainly i think what you started with richard saying you know there are these very very old traditions wisdom traditions uh which have uh to a certain extent been lost and drowned out in kind of like our over sexualized hyper sexualized uh, individualized commercialized culture as well um but but i think that part of what the work we're doing in manifesto is trying to reconnect to some of that wisdom as well okay good Let's hear from Stefan and then we'll see what comes out there and then we'll take, we'll go to the next two speakers as well. Thanks. Um, you both suggested that while having sex, it's not the goal to please her. And I totally agree with that, but I was just thinking, what is actually my goal while having sex? And I'm not too sure about it. So I'd like to ask a question to you. What is your goal while having sex? If you're comfortable talking about it. I'll answer briefly and shortly, um, just to make the distinction of sexual mastery versus like intercourse and, and sex in itself. And I'd like to hear what Marty says, because he's a more experienced in this area and he's you know been further down that track than, than I have, definitely. So I'm curious to hear what Marty says to that idea. But um, what I meant to say was that when my sole goal is about pleasing her, then I put my knees to one side. And of course, there are moments when we, we focus on one person's pleasure. That's beautiful. And then we can switch. And so we're not stuck in roles and then we can, you know, so that there's a beautiful idea of exchange there. As long as both people can learn how to give and receive and play that masculine and feminine pole. And that's really polarity. That's, that's, you know, that's exciting. So not in my relationships, I couldn't, um, I was obsessed with giving and I couldn't receive. Mm -hmm. That's super unhealthy. So that's what I, that's where, if you're coming from that space, then you being obsessed with pleasing her, so to say, is, is not healthy, but uh, I'd love to take the word goal out of sex and I'd love to relabel it as an exploration because sex ultimately, if we're not trying to have children, then we're seeking intimacy and we're seeking connection. And so if you come at it from that perspective of curiosity and openness and vulnerability, then and diving into your dark sides when there's enough safety and trust built, it can be a, an amazing time. Um, so yeah, it wasn't quite as short as I planned, but uh, I want to so challenge that a little bit, Richard. Why why do you separate out having children with intimacy and connection? Because for me, that's like that's even more powerful engine towards intimacy and connection is is creating a life together uh, as yeah, other yeah, human beings and that kind of commitment that requires. That's a strange thing to 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 remove those two things from each other. No, no, no. What, what uh, where I was coming from was that every time I have sex, I don't plan to have children. I can't afford that. <laughs> So uh, absolutely, can you have connection and intimacy? Probably, the, yeah. and I hope the deepest version of it in sex, because this fucking means something. We're going to create a life right now. So quite the opposite, Paul. I think that's the most okay, great. deepest sense of intimacy <laughs> we agree. possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Dima, not much to add. Important, Stefan. You understand that when I'm not saying that it's not good to please somebody. Okay, I mean, that's I don't, don't get me wrong. I just wanted to to find a direction towards the underlying uh, psychological pattern that was behind that guy's uh, intention to please. Of course, it's about pleasure, giving, receiving, but um, there is no goal. But I think a sexual relationship is something that can add, um, well, transforming extra to to the re relationship that you're having but that's only one part of sexual energy once again so if i get you right you're asking why do you have sex uh, i i think the best uh, intention is really to to have to spend a great time together to please each other and uh, add something which is exclusive and transforming uh, towards the relationship that you're having mm -hmm. yeah is that okay thanks for that i think at I think I just got hooked up on that one word with not having a goal and was like, okay, should I have a goal now? But it's all right. Thanks for clarifying. Great. Good. Thanks, guys. Okay. Um, then I'm going to say thank you very much to, to you, Dittmar and Richard. Appreciate it. I'm sure we'll hear more from you guys uh, in the conversation coming up if you, or if, you're, if you feel so inspired. Uh, now we're going to bring in two more guys.
uh, Marty and Frederick. And um, Marty, what have you heard so far? What stood out for you? And what do you bring? What would you like to bring to the conversation? Mm. Yeah, it was, it was great to hear the the, the discussion and uh, to, to see yeah so many things that are familiar and um, uh, yeah a lot of things already have been spoken to and I I would love to dive deeper into that. Uh, the first thing uh, what was talked about was the energy, how to flow the energy, and what Dietmar said as well, like. Uh, when he in the morning did his practices, his exercise, that he felt some energy within himself. And is that good or not? And uh, what I think the, the mastery is also to 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 allow you to feel that energy. And and uh, for me, the sexual energy is also a life energy force that's within you. And what you said, Paul it's 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 also enabling giving life it's it's life energy and you can give new life create life but it's also the energy life energy within yourself and what stefan uh, was asking about what is the goal if the goal is to 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 get somewhere in sex and to 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 ejaculate or whatever then 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 you go somewhere and, and spoil your energy instead of Feel how the energy within yourself can 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 flow, and from there, um, feel how you can create and manifest something in this world. That's the same energy you need for that to to put something in this world. And um, um, instead of of when you feel that energy, when you see something beautiful, and that can be a flower. It can also be a sunset, but also a, a beautiful uh, feminine creature that you that you enjoy it instead of oh no, that's not allowed that I enjoy it. Yeah, you you can feel the energy of all those things and take it in and use it as nature, natural energy that 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 is uh, fueling your your system and uh, without having to do anything with it, just feel how the universe is providing you with energy and um uh so, so that's that's more the the general energy you can feel from um from from what is life giving you and when it goes a little bit deeper a little bit more specific into the connection uh with a woman um it can be can be all uh, whatever your preference is. Um, most men are do have a, a masculine core, and most women do have a feminine core. And talking about the what were Dietmar and um, uh, with the pleasing, and Richard was talking about the recovering nice guy, um, and and I'm I'm one as well. And then oh. It, it, there's a kind of attachment and there's no no uh um no attraction there and when as a man you go to your masculine core okay this is who i am instead of trying to please her this is what i am then the woman can go to her core and there's an attraction there because you go out of each other and go from your own core instead of trying to 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 do the right thing you're just here you state your desire, hey, I want to connect with you. And when you connect from there with the woman, then then you can really open your heart. And and from there being together, uh, instead of what, what a lot of men know, uh, porn, um, Richard and, and, and Dima told about porn, you had, what you do there is that you go to a goal and use the woman as something on, on which you can do all kind of thing things instead of opening your heart and go to a connection with each other from there and and what you said paul is the uh, transcends you can feel you you can you can let the energy flow together and come in a in a in a state you 
you cannot come. I think it's impossible to get there on your own, whatever you do. You, you have to be there together with each other and, and find the, 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 the sweet spot of your energy and, and let it flow together. That is, that is another uh, layer. And if you can feel that energy within you, you can put that uh, energy into the world. And if you know where your purpose is, okay, I can take that energy and put my purpose in the world. And manifest it and that's that's how the, the the sexual mastery is helping you to put your purpose into the world hmm. you're muted uh, paul i just realized thanks marty yeah. <laughs> great thanks for that yes uh i think that's a, a good pouring point so so yeah frederick uh you have a have a different perspective in on all of this uh, do you want to give us uh, give us your views? <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Yeah, um, very interesting to to listen to these um, thoughts, and I'm not sure I understand every uh, some of these ways of thinking is are a bit new to me. Um, not sure where to start, but um, I'm I'm a little bit unsure why we're calling this. Uh, sexual mastery still even after hearing the different definitions and it, to me it sounds more like life mastery um i i don't quite see i mean i see there's a connection between energy and sexuality but yeah i'm just uh i'm a little, still a little confused about uh, why we why we use that uh, term for this um but maybe somebody can can speak to that um, afterwards. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for me, um, I I definitely agree that um, what's been said on on the, the purpose of sex as a as a um, tool for um, seeking intimacy and, and building relationship. Um, and for me, being uh, being a Christian, um, I think the the, the biblical um, perspective of this brings that to the highest level possible, um, because it it uh, as most people know, uh, Christianity talks about um, a like a, a, a only one relationship, um, only one. A sexual partner um, and kind of supercharges um, this uh, ability to build intimacy and relationship if that sexual energy that we're all talked a lot about is is only directed or maybe not the sexual energy but the the container for building intimacy and relationship is solely directed um to one person and is not shared or has been shared with many partners uh, throughout life. Um, and this is one of the main reasons why I have subscribed to um, this um, doctrine, so to speak, um, of waiting with sex until marriage. Um, and I'm still unmarried. Um, so, and I'm 31 years old. And so that means I haven't had intercourse with a woman um, ever in my life, and um, it's not a, it's not an easy thing. <laughs> um, but it's also I do believe that in the long term there is a greater gain uh, to be had from um, being able to give, so to speak, the the whole pie to. Uh, my future wife, wherever she is, I don't think, I don't know if I've met her yet. Um, I don't have a girlfriend at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, so that's some thoughts. I'm not sure uh, I could speak to a lot of things, but uh, maybe I'll pause there. Well, thanks, Frederick, for putting yourself out there. Maybe I just so you can recognize what Dietmar is saying about the dangers of the path that you're on. I assume, and, and you've experienced some of the things that he he sp was speaking about. Is that correct? Like, does that make sense to you? What he's saying? The dangers of uh, of what? Sorry. Well, 
I, I guess what we kind of identified was suppression um, of sexuality um, and, and not having a, an outlet for those forces in, in your life. Um, or do you feel you have an outlet for those forces in your life? That's a good, it's a good question. It's quite a deep question. Um, I know that, um, those desires and the, the energy or the force that is in that is definitely present in my life. Um, and I, I do not have a woman that I can direct that, uh, to, um, and it, it has, um, definitely in the past been directed towards pornography um and that is definitely I, I very much agree with the views that has been expressed about porn here um and how how that uh, breaks us down as as men um and, and twists uh, our our views of what sex is um but um i think I'm trying trying to identify what it is that in my life that I direct this life or sexual energy towards, um, and I I agree definitely agree with something you said earlier about um, meaningful relationships and in, intimate relationships, um, um, like but those they can I I think you also meant they can be between um friends also it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship um i'm not i'm not quite exactly sure how to re okay. respond to this well, marty do you want to dive in here otherwise i can try and answer frederick's question but then i want to give you first which opportunity marty if you have more you want to add or or reflect on what frederick is saying well i'm, I'm really curious about um what he was telling about uh, your question about the suppression um and what i was referring to as well like like how how do you react and that's not especially for you frederick but everybody how do you re react when you you feel the energy of what nature is offering you and i mentioned the flower or sunset but also a woman and um without having to do anything with it like like um keeping your virginity towards the one woman you feel you're going to meet and to have this connection with but still in the meantime you can see something and and what does it do with you and how do you react do, does it respond like oh no i i don't uh that that's not allowed that i can feel that i should put that away but that's because that's not my womb or is that okay that's what nature is giving me and that's what i feel and in the meantime I just let it go. I only feel the energy. I feel the the the, um, the 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 connection and and let it go. Or or are you pushing it away? And everything that is pushed away, I think it it will come up on another way into your life, on a way you don't want it, on a moment you don't want it, and and get out on a on a kind of frustration. Mm. And I'm really curious how how you how that is in your life how how you um... yeah yeah great um good question i can i just for clarification ask just because i'm i'm not really used to this um energy terminology are we when you'd say for example you see a woman are we talking about like feeling horny or what exactly are you are you or like what is it you exactly you mean it, it can be when you're just on the street going to the supermarket and you pass by a woman and you think, oh, wow, uh, and, and that you think she's really attractive. And I can mm -hmm. imagine that when you go to a pub and you had some drinks, that the atmosphere is totally different. And then you can have the same, oh, you're, you're gorgeous. But, but let's talk about just a supermarket that you, that you feel, wow, oh, wow, there's a kind of attraction. Yeah. Um, yeah okay i can speak to that um because that is that is something that um has definitely um my thinking around this has has evolved over time where um 
for a long time i saw it as a as a problem you know like as a mm. uh, you know i have to mm. push this down or um like this is sinful this is bad where um after realizing that okay this uh like seeing a woman and and finding her attractive is is the way god created me he created me as a man and he created beauty is what mm. i believe and so um the thought or the question is more um is are the my immediate reaction shouldn't be to suppress that but it should also be like i could i can appreciate that and then my my what i try to do is i try to um personify the woman so instead of trying to um like fall to the temptation of trying to um objectify her and think all sorts of uh, scenarios or um yeah trying trying to fantasize about uh, or stripping her naked in my thoughts for example um instead of doing that i try to um sometimes i try to just build a small story about oh she's probably going to her mom's place to um <laughs> to have tea with her mom or whatever um like to to make make her a person and just i also express gratitude in prayer like internal in prayer to god and just say wow god you she's very beautiful like i'm just acknowledging it um and then if i if i can feel that i want to uh, fantasize about it then i try to personify her in mm. uh, instead mm. um yeah if that makes sense yeah, yeah. And, and to add on that, um, uh, you were asking uh, about the energy. Um, what you say now is that you, you make a story not to blame yourself and not to suppress it or whatever. What I think what, what, what's happening there is that something is, is resonating with you at the moment. Eh? Just, just the... the the, the woman when you're walking through the supermarket and that you feel that in your belly in your lower belly and what's happening in our society is that very quickly this is made sexual and then it goes to the to the front to the outside mm. world the objectification what you have but instead of hey there's something in my underbelly i have to do something with it no there's something in my underbelly and i oh i can feel it okay thank you Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Mm. And go on. But mm -hmm. there is something um, activated within me and I can put that into life. And it was a beautiful woman that you you created. That's nice. Yeah. Without the objectification of doing something with it, and but only feeling that within yourself. And that's what I meant with the energy. Oh, it's just mm. there. It's so. So what, part of what we we're, we're I mean, the reason why we call it sexual mastery is because a lot of us are have become slaves to our sexual impulses, <laughs> and so mm. we're drawn by things that happen outside of us, and and you know impulses that we receive, and then we we just kind of follow them, and and. Of course, if we get in a very negative, full of shame and negativity relationship to that, then then it becomes it actually gives it more power a lot of the time. So I, I want to go back and try to answer Fre uh, Frederick's question a little bit. And I, I think to do that, actually, you need to go back to the very first thing that Dietmar was talking about, which was oxytocin, because uh, I think he very rightly says this is where a lot of our sexual kind of uh, the, the first taste of sexuality our sexual impulses are formed is with the relationship with the mother's breast and what it really is is a feeling of being one with the mother uh, of course when you're inside the womb then you are one with the mother in pretty much every practical way um, uh, uh, and, and so there's this kind of, you know, deep intimacy and togetherness of being one with another being, which feels incredibly good. And, and then you, you receive that as a, as a small infant as well as your, as your child. And so oxytocin, it's like the feel good hom hormone, as Dietmar says, but it's also, you know, a lot of people, they take all kinds of psych psych uh, psychedelic, uh, substances that increase the level of oxytocin in the brain, which makes them feel even one with the entire universe. So this is this idea of transcendence of the individual. 
And so sexuality is this way, is a direct pathway into transcendence of yourself. It's a, it's a way. And so if you ask me, what's the goal of sexuality? Well, the goal of sexuality is to transcend yourself. It's to be joined with another person. And you do that in a very physical way in that you're actually physically inside another person. Or if you're a woman, there's another person who's physically inside of you. So you become joined in that way. And then the even more powerful and slightly more longer term expression of that is that it creates actually new life. And so it creates life outside of yourself and you're transcending to, you know, human individuals and creating another human individual that's somehow a combination of those two people. And so, and so for me, the question of sexual mastery needs to take this into account and to think, well, I have this power inside of me and how am I managing it? And how am I, you know, administrating it in a way that's directing it towards actually creating life? Because we see so many people where their sexual energy is actually just, you know, creating misery or confusion or chaos. And, and certainly I've been in, in many different uh, communities where there's a very free and open uh, expression or approach to sexuality and it's seen any kind of attempt to limit sexual impulses. It seems, oh, that's suppression. And we have to stop that. We're not allowed to suppress sexual energy. And what, what does this lead to? Well, it means that people very often get strongly and powerfully attracted to each other. And they jump into bed with each other and they have sex with each other. And it causes a lot of chaos and, and confusion and, and drama in their lives. It ruins relationships. And, and just like, yeah, ultimately, <laughs> it, it, it leads nowhere as well. And so... And so I, I think this is something we need to take very seriously is like, okay, well, how do we create structures in our lives that can help us to administrate our sexual energy in a way that's responsible and that leads us to flourishing for ourselves and for those around us and which isn't um, also sucking the life out of our own soul. And that's not an easy thing. It's like, it's like balancing on a knife edge, actually. It sounds okay. Well, oh, I just have to like go the middle path, but it's, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. And what I find is it takes a constant engagement with life and having courage to meet everything. The beautiful woman coming down the street. Personally, uh, Marty, to tell you the truth, if I see a beautiful woman and if, a one, if, and if she wants to talk to me, I, I hold a lot of distance not because I'm suppressing something in some kind of negative way, but just because I know that, that I, it's very easy for me to get attracted to that woman and it will take away from the amazing depth that I can experience with my wife. And that's why I want to focus all of my sexual energy. Uh, so I, I don't engage my sexual energy with random women that I meet or women that I meet in work situations. I actually really avoid, if there's a beautiful woman who pops up in my working circles, I will not sit in a room with her by myself. I will avoid that situation because I know that there'll be attraction there. And it's very easy to go into all kinds of like subconscious signals and women are much better at that game than I am as well. And so they could sometimes play with my very masculine, whatever it is. Right. So, so I, so I, I reserve this and I, and I avoid any situation that can lead me into that kind of stuff. And that's what I found is best for me, maybe because I've had a life of a lot of mm -hmm. chaos on that front as well. Um, so I'll give you guys an opportunity to respond to that. And then I'll, I want to bring Richard and, and Dietmar back in as well for, for any comments they can have. And we'll also open up guys. If you have questions, feel free to put it into the chat as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'll let you guys respond to that. I, I like to react on that, uh, Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, two things that, that came up to me. First thing, what you said at the, uh, at the end, like uh, keeping a kind of distance. Um, and that is what feels to me like when you wouldn't do that then there could be a kind of objectification and and a kind of attraction where you're not waiting for and that is keeping the energy to to yourself and when you're just passing by someone then then oh, you're not turning towards that person you're just keeping all your energy with yourself and that's what i hear from you as well and um next to that what you said about all the uh, the communities you were talking about were all kind of things um where it goes wrong or where it can go right has to do with communication communication in two ways communication with the other how, how to 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 state what you want and what you want to do and how you're going to do it and the honesty to look towards yourself what you're feeling and what your real and true desire and and and, and longing is and and your your um uh fear as well like when, when you're stepping onto someone uh asking for something 
that you are willing to take the rejection as well. Hey, this is where I am. Am I starting to be the nice guy because I'm afraid of the, the rejection or am I really, really be there? So that the honesty towards yourself and towards the other is, is really important. So that's that's my re reaction on, on what you were saying there as well. And that's, that's, that's a practice and, and something to master as well, that kind of honesty. Um, next to that, uh, the other point um, is referring to the question uh, of Frederick is about the goal and how beautiful it is that you can create life. And there's a lot of life created when a man and uh, a man and a woman uh, have intercourse to uh, create a new life. And they don't have to be connected. They can both be on the same, on their own level and just feeling each other without being connected. Then they think they are on, on, a, on, a, on a really energetic uh, spiritual way that they just have um, um, uh, a body connection without really being energetically connected and it, it creates life as well but it doesn't mean that when you're creating life that you're always connected as the way you could be that's my uh, th that's how I feel it so and and if you're then talking about a goal yeah that's to be really connected on a spiritual uh, way, that's yeah, that's the goal for me. I, mean, I think one of our core problems in our society is we separate the body from the soul or the mind or the whatever. We split ourselves and then we, we say, oh, this is just the body. And I, I think it's it's one of our major issues in, in our society is that mm. we split ourselves in this way and we don't actually see ourselves as an integrated holistic whole. You can't separate the body from the psyche it's, it's not yeah. possible you can try and what you do is you'll kill you'll kill the one or the other actually you'll end up you know being a, a, a spiritual zombie or you'll end up being sick in your in your in your mm. physical body yeah. i think that's what that's what happens when you separate those two things especially in your sexuality these things need to be seen holistically and together but let's hear Fre let's hear frederick and then we're going to bring richard and and Dietmar back in well i'll just say that i I, I'm starting to understand why why we call it sexual mastery. <laughs> so, but um, <laughs> I don't have uh, too much else to add. Okay, good. Okay, I'm sure Dietmar and, and Richard uh, do. So let's uh, let's bring them in here. And guys, questions in the chat if any of you have any as well. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe I can say something to uh, the case of Mr. Brumman. <laughs> Frederick, thank you very much for, for sharing this. I think it's um, that's really interesting what you what you just shared. And I think one one thing that we really need to highlight here is that, you know, even though you did not have any experience with real sexual intercourse, you just told us that you react in this supermarket situation. So you have you see this nice woman coming out and you react to that. And usually what happens in in um, with regards to neurobiology, we react emotionally to something that reminds us of something that we've experienced in the past. So when I when when you have that's that's uh, pretty obvious in trauma patients. You know, if you have traumatic experience and then that's far in the past, and you get into a situation which is kind of similar, and then you react in the same way. That's that also applies to positive situations. So what I'm trying to say here is this this attitude towards being attracted uh, by a good looking woman is something that's really 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 nailed down in our neurobiological system so somewhere in the in the limbic system where you just react and you get this this emotion um, there's a firework that wires to get and then you just react to that and you're uh, the way that you deal with it is that you fantasize stripping her off naked. So that's something which is really uh, showing that there must, uh, you know, there is something that you haven't experienced yet, but what you're aiming for. I think that's very interesting to realize that there's, uh, that this is really localized inside us and that's, that's never going to be changed, I think. But 
looking at uh, sexual mastery, if we now look at your case and we take the 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 uh, another perspective and look towards you, then we would say, this is Frederick, and let's let's just draw the circle around him. And one way of being sexually active would be to have intercourse. Well, you haven't done that, but you have been sexually active because there's other ways of uh, expressing or dealing with that energy. It might have been in your case that you were uh, using porn uh, to deal with your sexual energy, but that's a kind, that's a way of being sexually active as well. But but as we all uh, agree, if you if this is your way of being sexually active, then you will just uh, you you won't really use uh, or take a positive use of the energy that's inside you. So sexual mastery would be to realize that there's this energy that you've just experienced passing by this woman in the supermarket and then just take note of this energy, make sure you realize it's there and then transform that into something that is much more productive and creative than just watching a porn video. And yet as well, you can save one part of your sexual activity towards the woman that you're waiting for in order to get this transforming part into the relationship that you're aiming for. That's my take on that one. Makes sense. I'll jump in um, again to piggyback on DeepMind's input. Um, what I'm noticing is what I'm hearing in this conversation is, is that sexual mastery is probably going to look different for different people depending on you know, their backgrounds. And that's quite an important thing to highlight. There's no step one, step two, you know, uh, sheep dip process <laughs> towards sexual mastery. It, it doesn't work like that. I mean, Paul shared how he needs to and it might sound extreme to some but he needs to distance himself from women because he knows the potential of how that can go and i think that speaks to integrity and it speaks to an awareness of uh how he can behave and he's just shutting that down and that doesn't mean that he has no ability to kind of appreciate a woman walking down the street at all there's a, there's a big difference and I, I think i hope that was i'm getting that there's a clear difference there if we look at sex before we get to the place where it's kind of super conscious and intimate and a beautiful thing, sex is essentially um, a perverted expression of our unmet needs. And that's how we meet those needs. It's like in the most perverted form, if we really look at ourselves, but we don't look at ourselves. And so we jump in. And so I think it's really all about knowing oneself first and one, knowing oneself and how the show up uh, around women is it's, it's part of for me of like life's mystery and I'm really struggling with I respect Frederick's choice but I'm, I'm struggling with that decision because for me uh, despite the ups and downs and the stresses like I, I wouldn't change anything um, because now I have finally at 42 like a really strong awareness of how I use my energy what that actually is and how I throw it about and how I also shouldn't. And even last night I'm teaching here at a retreat um, and I sat down and was trying to connect with a particular woman until I realized why I was doing it. You know, she's married, she's got a kid, I, I'm in a relationship. And yet there was some kind of unconscious part of me seeking to do this thing that I, I often do. And I'm aware, got it. And I stepped out of that without needing to make a scene, without needing to acknowledge it with her but we throw our energy around as men when we have it and to wait so long until you finally have sex because that is just an incredible amount of intimacy to deal with it and and in connection at any age and to then start to navigate that stuff um i guess you are making a strong choice to make uh, create a lot of self-awareness now but it, in practice it comes when we we put it together with women or, it, or, you know, with other men, if, if, you know, we're that way inclined and it's all welcome. But uh, just to round up, like I, I think of a client of mine that was really hurt by a partner. And so she decided to be celebrate for a year. But really what she was doing was, was avoiding the potential pain of, of, of going back into that. And so 
self-awareness is one piece like self-knowledge but then actually putting it in practice means that we're going to make mistakes and um i see sex as, and, and intimacy and that kind of relationship is just the most incredible playground and i think it's really um perhaps that sounds childish that's the wrong word it, it can be deep as well um and so and dangerous right i'd say playground yes that dangerous <laughs> playground as well right like you, you could get burnt you could hurt yourself you could fall it's not like with cotton padding <laughs> but uh But, uh, it, But then you know yourself. Yeah. Well, it's where you learn to to know yourself as well, right? So yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, and and I think it's it's good to be on that. I mean, I'd actually like to just maybe challenge Frederick a little bit because he, you know, he he comes from this Christian tradition. Um, but I think there's a, Christ says himself something along the lines of, you know, like you know, it's you've been told don't commit adultery, but I say to you, if you look at another woman then you're committing adultery. <laughs> so he actually equates the suppression and the kind of the desire, the envying with the act himself. And, and so he's, he actually brings these two things together. There's the story that really challenges me in the Christian tradition of the prodigal son, which is actually the story of two sons. There's, there's the younger son who goes out and does all the crazy and wild things. And then there's the older son who stays at home and he's all responsible. He does everything right, according to his father. And he's, he's the good boy, right? And at the end of the story, there's a big party that's held. And who's in the party? Well, it's the younger son who came back to the father as well. And this is a big challenge for me as well in many ways because, because, because now I've tried to become like, now I want to be an older son and take responsibility. But then there's such a big risk of this prideful, now I'm being a good boy and I'm a man with integrity. I'm an awakened man or I'm a reimagined man or I'm a conscious man. And, and, and as a result, oh, I'm a Christian man or whatever label it is that I give to it, right? And, and as a result, I end up just cutting myself from, from a source of life, which is, you know, which is what sexuality is. You know, if, if, if sexuality is, is, is a drive, I believe, ultimately towards the divine, towards transcendence, it is this, it's, 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 it's a need for, for meeting and becoming one with something greater than ourselves. Then, then I believe then, you know, we need to be, it, it's, it's entering into the unknown as well. And so we need to be um, careful, aware, <laughs> playing but playing with a lot of care to not hurt ourselves and not hurt others and not hurt ourselves as well does that make sense to you guys i'm seeing richard nodding <laughs> yeah marty yeah I, i like to react on that um and that is that what i was stating before that uh communication and feeling your own system is so important that that the communication And that's also a kind of feeling yourself. Hey, what am I doing? Uh, bye, Dima. Thanks, Dima, for joining. Yeah, we you, we realize you had to leave. So yeah, great. Thanks. And and where am I for myself? And what am I doing? Like what uh, Richard was describing, how he was reacting on 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 that woman. What am I avoiding what am i trying to fix what kind of pain am i avoiding uh is, is there something i don't want to feel or try to feel good or whatever when i'm in this playground i can be hurt and it can be painful and that's something different than uh being on a um uh on a chess club that that's a playground as well and i can be hurt and i can be rejected And it's a totally different game than being in a, in a sexual intimate relationship. And it's the same thing. How can I communicate and how can I feel into my own system what is there? Only the forces are way bigger. It's it's really life force what is there. That's what Frederick, I want. You got your hand up. Yeah, I um, just wanted to comment to just lower my hand here um to so what you uh what you said um and i think that there's a, a very important uh detail in the uh, in the quote you you have shared about uh from jesus is that if you he didn't just say if you look at another woman he said if you look at another woman with lust yeah. um and i think that's the key um because and and actually to quote um i'm I've been sitting and thinking, what is his name? But I can't remember. He was one of the elders in um, in EMG uh, 2021. Um, and it's not Father Michael, um, but... Um, Eli Buren? Eli Buren, exactly. I, and I was quite surprised to hear this, actually, from 
anybody not within the church and this this is uh, this shows some of my ignorance but um he said um when you look at a woman are you are you stealing with your eye or are you uh giving with your eyes or are are you, are you taking or are you giving and i i thought that was a brilliant way of putting it and and kind of describing lust actually uh, what is it that you do with your heart? Where is your heart in that when you see that woman? Are you appreciating the beauty or are you trying to steal it for yourself? Um, so, yeah, just wanted to add that in. Yeah, that's a beautiful perspective. Uh, and I, for me, I think one of the things I talk about, I actually just made a video on our YouTube channel about like being a consumer or a creator. And, and I think, you know, that in so many ways, consumption you know it starts with food and i think our our inability and you know the loss of any like any big tradition for fasting uh you know all spiritual traditions normally had fasting as a central part of it and it's kind of been lost in the west many people do it for health reasons and that's great of course but but i also think that fasting uh, as a as a practice as a personal practice to learn to consume to control my urge to consume all the time and that's with regard to food, but it's also regard to with sexuality and, and the way that I, I feed. And I think pornography is the ultimate addiction for the consumption society. It holds people in this role of being a passive consumer that's just consuming, consuming, consuming all the time and, and not having to create, which is what our sexuality is about. It's about creation, right? Instead of just being, and, and so I think that stealing uh, or, or giving is some way. And, and there's something about what you started with Frederick about seeing the other person or seeing the other as a whole person instead of an object for my satisfaction. And so I also think, you know, as Richard was rightly putting out, uh, it, it's about transcending this idea of like giving and taking, giving and taking, like oh, my needs and your needs. No, that's not what it's about, actually. It's, it's, about, it's about what are we when we are together? <laughs> Something else arises that's together, which, you know, I, I think science can kind of point us in that right direction, but, but something happens there. Everybody's experienced that. Uh, in in some form or another it, it's when when things come together it's when the you know the at a physical level when the brain is flushed with oxytocin but it can happen in every kind of a different situation where 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 there's this experience of of a transcendence that like okay there's something going on here which is which is interesting and worthwhile and it feeds that center of me that that wants more life i would say mm -hmm. So guys, should we have a, a final round of comments? I mean, we all, isn't there anyone in the, in the, in the audience uh, who wants to uh, add something? We have a couple of guys in there or a question for the, we have the last 10 minutes now. Can I see a hand up? Yeah, go for it. Sylvester, great to see you again. It's been a little while. Hi. Uh, well, Marty, you, you, you've described a, uh... Some, some quite beautiful dynamics between a man and a woman. And this, this seems like the ideal. Uh, but I also see that, that this like requires a lot of vulnerability from each part. Um, so so how, how, how would you say that you maintain this vulnerability when, if, if you've had multiple sexual partners throughout your life? Um, and, and, and I think that's part of the Christian message as well, that, that you kind of guard your heart and, and save this vulnerability uh, until you're, you can give it to a person who has the same vulnerability so you can meet each other at the same same place so how do you how do you maintain this vulnerability or replenish your your heart after a heartbreak or you know a a a vulnerable relationship that ended sour uh because because i think that that's that's the dangerous part when you when you damage your heart how do you you know how, how do you replenish it so that you can you can meet another person with this vulnerability, which I think is essential between a man and a woman. Uh, very good question, Sylvester. I, I directly, when you, you're telling it, I, I feel how I, how I only can answer it, this with an open heart. And um, I, I can tell another story. We had a, um, this morning we had a, meeting with our Babylon group and I had a deep dive and what came up there was a story of me with my father of that I was not being seen 
and how I take that into every relationship I had afterwards with with my friends within my relationship and also with my current wife we're together for 11 years and and to be aware of it to be conscious oh yeah this is what happens to me from way way back and I'll take it with me in this relationship and it prevents me from opening up and what I have to do is feel the pain and still opening up and still opening up and you cannot do that on your own you have to be together with a partner who is willing to open up her heart as well and to be conscious of that hey a partner hey wife hey love I'm opening up myself and I want to be with myself and I want to be in this connection and and it takes courage it takes courage to do that and um and every time you have to be aware that you step into a zone in which you can be uh, hurt there is no love without pain it, it's, it's going to be painful in in some way and even every time when you step into it okay i know i can get hurt and i do it anyway what paul described hey you have to go to a place where you cannot where you both want to go that means you have to step into that vulnerability you cannot do it with a closed heart to 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 step in there because you feel okay that's where i want to go and it means that i can be rejected and even knowing that i can be rejected i step into this place and doing that gives you the opportunity to meet the other on a way you never can meet the other without doing that so that means that is what i meant as well by knowing yourself oh yeah there's my pain i know i was rejected by my father and i know i project that on my partner as well that she's going to reject it and even though i know it i still open my heart and let myself be touched again um, and that means that i can be rejected but it means as well that i can come to a to a way of connection i never can can reach on my own and always stepping into that in the possibility of being hurt gives you the possibility of the transcend uh, within the connection yeah thank you yeah I and F F frederick maybe i can uh ask you as well um also on the topic of vulnerability um you you seem to be maybe on the search for a woman or open to meeting a woman what what if if you're aware of this what what sort of signs are you looking for or you know what what, what do you think could trigger you to open up and and you know allow this vulnerability to flow um because uh, it 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 uh it doesn't seem like an easy task finding finding someone that you can really you know share this level of vulnerability with when you've managed to to hold your chastity until now that's a you know um uh, i imagine there's there's some deep vulnerability that you haven't shared with any other human on this earth yet and that's absolutely precious so so i imagine you you know uh how how are you uh how have you managed to guard yourself until now and what are you looking for to you know let down your guard if that makes sense uh, that, that's a good question a <laughs> deep, deep one Beautiful question <laughs> um it's, it's almost like uh i'm not sure it's it's possible for me to answer it but um um what i'm looking for in a woman is um a woman that that will be um with me in in actually in in that purpose of life um and that that is part of why i um put a, a very heavy limit on the uh types of women that i can 
that I can date um, because I, I do want uh, to find a woman who also shares uh, my my worldview and my um, my view on what the purpose of of and of existence is um, within the Christian um, sphere, so to say, um, and that that narrows uh, the the pool of potential uh, women down quite a lot in Denmark. Um, so I think if I if I find uh, yeah, the the woman that is uh, that that is does agree with these things. Um, it, it, I'm not saying that she has to also have been uh, chased, so to speak, um, her whole life. It's it's not a it's not a uh, a requirement for me. Um, so, uh, but I, then I think I have um, preferences like any other. Um, man has and those also play a part in selecting um, so I think that maybe answers part of your question but you also asked something else I, I can't remember yeah but we're getting to time guys we have two minutes left so yeah you, you, you seem like you're confident that your heart will do the selecting uh, so <laughs> that, that, that well, answers the question plenty okay yeah <laughs> well yes and no because the bible also says that our hearts are deceptive. <laughs> yeah. So I also try to, to use my brain as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I would love to add one remark. Yeah, go for it, Marty. Last, last word for you. Is, is that even when you're not in a relationship, in an intimate relationship, you can be uh, vulnerable as well and practice the vulnerability and being open to everybody in the world probably goes not so deep with an intimate than with an intimate partner but you can practice vulnerability and be strong in that in in the whole world I hope. thanks guys uh for that thank you sylvester for a really really uh insightful and beautiful questions that i thought really opened up the discussion at the end yeah, that was greatly appreciated uh, and thank you all for joining into the conversation here much appreciated um i have plenty of stuff that i'm gonna have to think about from from this uh, and taking the conversation forward um, and trying to understand how to how to guide this in the right way. So we'll we'll definitely be having more opportunities to discuss this topic in different types of forums. So thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.